Good morning. Grace to you and peace this first Sunday in Lent. My name is Kim Adams, and I'm the pastor at First Presbyterian Church, Valparaiso. We welcome you this morning and are grateful that you are connecting with us this day. We have a variety of worship and faith formation opportunities this Lenten season. Hope that you can join us from 9 to 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings for a discussion based on Rabbi Evan Moffick's book, What Every Christian Needs to Know About Passover. A Zoom link was emailed to the congregation in, on this past Friday in the email blast and can also be found on FPC Valpo's Facebook page. Then on Sunday afternoon, the poetic journey continues through Lent. So come and join the conversation at the intersection of faith and poetry. Information on how to acquire a Zoom link can be found on page 14 of your bulletin. And then Zoom into Lenten Wednesday worship with communion from 7 till 7.30 p.m., the link was also in the Friday email blast and can be found on FPC Valpo's Facebook page. Mark your calendars for March 9th. The blood drive will be in Fellowship Hall from 1 to 6 p.m. Instructions for sign up can be found on page 12 in your bulletin. Parents, and guardians of 7th and 8th graders, just a reminder that confirmation class begins at 11.30 this morning following worship. Our Director of Christian Education and Youth Ministry, Ken Cruz, sent out a letter on February 11th with details and a follow-up email on Thursday. Hopefully by this point you've read over the letter and have reached out with any questions. Presby's youth group, but really and everyone, grab your snow pants, coats, gloves, and a sled, and let's meet at Rogers Park this afternoon from 2 to 3.30 for some sledding. This week, this past week, has presented a number of challenges weather-wise for folks across the country. Presbyterian disaster assistance is in communication with Presbyterian leadership on the ground in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana, and is ready to assist. Please join us, join us in praying for safety and warmth. And if you are able to financially support PDA, um, the response, you can mail a check to the church office here. That's 3401 North Valparaiso Street, Valparaiso, Indiana, 46383. And in the memo, put PDA Winter Storms. In addition, thank you to all who showed up for the Lenten Act of Service on Ash Wednesday to shovel snow off the roof with 15 people. It took um, only one hour to accomplish what was needed. A great witness to how the church can work, as well as um, many hands make for light work. So thank you to all. Furthermore, we thank you for your continued support of FPC Valpo. We've learned a lot of new things over this last year, and through it all, one thing is certain. God's Spirit continues to guide us and connect us in many ways. Many of us could have never probably even imagined. Leading worship this morning, I am joined by Brad, Joy, our liturgist, Trish, Ken Cruz, Harry, Emma, Lauren, Kim, and Mike. Please ex join me in expressing gratitude for their leadership and to Jeff and Jerry for their work with technology Luann for liturgy, along with Ginger for helping to set up this space. Today is Blue T-Shirt Sunday in the Presbyterian Church USA, a time to celebrate the work of Presbyterian disaster assistance 
and the work of this community in our service to others. With more on that, here's a video produced by our very own elder, Matthew Byerly. There are sounds that most of us love to hear. Sounds that elicit good feelings and images of joy. Happy birthday! Comfort. <laughs> Hope for the life ahead. But there are other sounds. Sounds that leave us with feelings of fear. Grief. Suffering. Throughout our country and in every corner of the globe, people just like you and me, with lives full of promise and hope, turn a corner to find life's greatest obstacles staring them in the face. They experience the kind of disaster that is beyond our comprehension. But that is where we come in. Presbyterian Disaster Assistance enables congregations and mission partners of the Presbyterian Church USA to witness to the healing love of Christ through caring for communities adversely affected by crisis and catastrophic events. When disaster strikes, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance is there for the long-term recovery of those impacted. Long after the world has moved on, our blue-shirted volunteers in the U.S. and our ecumenical mission partners around the world are still there witnessing to the presence of God. Leading by example, serving those who need it most, restoring the promise of hope through the healing power of Jesus Christ. Please join me in the call to worship. We have entered the season of Lent, a time to examine our hearts and our lives and journey with Christ through the suffering of the world. Let us lift up our souls to our merciful God and humble ourselves in God's service. God has marked us as beloved dust and called us to worship.
Friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. In humility, let us lift up our failures to God, who waits always to forgive. <clears throat> we admit we are hesitant to walk to Jerusalem and beyond with you, God of glory. In a world where we worry about tomorrow before enjoying today, we race by your moments of silence. In that flood of worries, which can overwhelm us, we may miss the assurance that you have not cut us off from your grace. In the desert of our desires, we may ignore that feast of hope, joy, in life that you offer to us. Forgive us and have mercy on us. In humility, may we offer our lives to others. In love, may we share your grace with everyone we meet. And in hope, may we wait for you all of our days. As you come to us in Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. Friends, this is the good news of the gospel, and it is for you and for all. Whatever you have done, whatever you have failed to do, whoever you are, whoever you wish you were but are not, you are accepted, you are welcomed, you are washed clean, you are raised up, you are forgiven, you are set free. In the love of Jesus Christ, you are loved forever. In the waters of baptism, we are set free to let go what is old and broken, to live a new life in the resurrection, and to follow together a joyful way after Jesus Christ, our loving Savior. Thanks be to God. And now, friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us join Harry and Emma in singing our February children's song, This Little Light of Mine. God is good all the time. That's right, friends, all the time. God is good. Ken Cruz here, and welcome to my home for this morning's children's moment. And Ellie welcomes you <laughs> as well. Now, friends, I know a lot of new things have happened over this last year because of the pandemic. For example, maybe this is the first time that your mom or dad have worked from home. Perhaps this is the first time that you've had to do schoolwork from home, other than the occasional homework or class project. And this is the first time that many people have done church at home. That's right. For many of us, it's the 
first time that we've worshipped or studied the Bible or taken part in a vacation Bible camp at home. But all of these things that seem very new to us have in fact been happening this way for a very long time, including church. That's right. The ancient Jewish communities, of which Jesus was a member, did much of their religious education at home with their family and worshiped God in special ways with their families at home. The early church often met in people's homes because they didn't have a building to gather in. Sometimes they had to meet in private because it wasn't even legal for them to be gathering together. And even before the COVID pandemic, many people of many faiths participated in worship and religious education in their homes. Now, when folks gather at home, they still need resources to, to worship and to learn, right? Well, that's right. And so religious leaders for a long time have been sharing ways that people can learn and, and worship together at home. People have gathered around holy books, like our Bible, for many years at home. People have sang songs together in their homes for a long time. And often folks have have shared special meals around holidays and religious observances. And so as we continue our year together, we are fortunate to have a lot of resources to connect with connect us. Our Bibles, our, our, uh, our hymnals if you have one at home, and all the technology that we've been using. And so friends, as we enter into a special season in the church, a season called Lent, we have resources that we can use to learn together at home and to worship together at home. One of these resources that I want to share with you is a little white bag that you could pick up at the church if you haven't already done so. There's a lot of great things in this bag, but something that I especially want to point out is a purple calendar on this little purple piece of paper. This calendar offers us a variety of ways that we can worship and learn at home, as individuals and as families. Last week, we learned about Transfiguration Sunday, when Jesus' clothes shined so bright and God spoke to Jesus and the disciples. And that reminded us that Jesus is divine. Jesus is God. And now we enter into a time called Lent that often reminds us that Jesus was fully human as well. That Jesus got hungry. That Jesus felt pain even. And that Jesus got sad. And so we're invited to think about how we connect with Jesus as God and Jesus as a person. There are three different types of activities on our calendar that we can participate in. One of those activities is prayer. And our calendar gives a variety of ways that we can pray throughout Lent. Another is almsgiving. Well, we're going to talk about that big word another week. This week, I want to talk about a word Fast or fasting. When you hear the word fast, what comes to mind? Perhaps you think of a fast car, or you know somebody who talks fast. To do something fast means that we can do it very quickly. We can make something happen in a very small amount of time. There's another way that we can understand the word fast. A fast or too fast means to give something up. Oftentimes, for spiritual or health reasons, people will choose to fast from food. This is a common practice in many religious traditions, including the Christian tradition. Many people during Lent will fast from certain types of meat. People will Lent from <laughs> will Lent will fast from um, sugary drinks or candies, and our calendar gives us some ideas for how we might fast. We don't always have to just give up food. We can give up uh, screen time with our technology. 
we can give up a practice of maybe picking on a brother or a sister and choosing instead to be nice. This Thursday, February 25th, our calendar does focus on food a little bit. It invites us to fast from snacks. It says, no snacks between meals today. Some people will fast from a meal altogether, meaning they might not eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner on a particular day. But our calendar is inviting us to have our meals, but simply do not have any snacks during the day. Why would we do such a thing? Well, for a variety of reasons. Some people choose to give something up, to remember that Jesus gave up so much so that we might all be forgiven. Some people fast because when we do, we can get a little uncomfortable. And it reminds us that Jesus got a little uncomfortable as well. That Jesus got hungry and had those moments of thinking, I could really use a bite to eat right now. That Jesus got thirsty. That Jesus kind of did without and felt all the feelings that people feel as well. Fasting invites us to think about the ways that Jesus gave up things for us. Now, when we give something up, it also creates space for something else to happen. When we fast, we're giving up something that kind of is connected to the world. And in that space where we give up that worldly thing, we can create space for godly things. Another thing that we can do when we fast is this. Perhaps if I choose to fast from a meal, I can give up that food for the day. And all of the monies that I might have used to purchase that food, I can use that to purchase a meal for someone in need. So fasting can be about giving up and about giving all at the same time. Because what we know is that Jesus gave up a lot so that he could give the gift of eternal life to all of God's people. And so, friends, as we continue our Lenten journey and we're preparing for Easter, I want to encourage you and your family to participate in our Lenten calendar and our other many Lenten practices. You'll be invited to pray and to almsgive, which we will talk about, and to fast all throughout Lent to prepare us for the amazing gift that we receive in Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday. And until we connect again, friends, peace be with you.
Let us pray. In rushing waters and in dry wilderness, in every season and circumstance, we need your sustaining word. By the power of your Holy Spirit, proclaim the good news among us today so that we may repent and believe and see anew how the time is fulfilled and your kingdom has come near. In Jesus Christ, your child, our Savior. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the first chapter of Mark's gospel, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Mark came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice from heaven, and a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days. Tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The season of Lent is wonderfully contemplative, a period of six weeks in which we are invited into a wilderness experience of self-examination, recognition of our brokenness, confession of our sin, and the reality of our mortality. Some people absolutely love this liturgical season because of its contemplative nature, while others can hardly wait to practice joy on Easter Sunday. However, we are an Easter people, so really every Sunday, even the ones during Lent, are a celebration of Christ's resurrection. This is why people who add a discipline to their Lenten journey sometimes take Sundays off. If you've been using the Lenten devotional that many of FPC members and friends have contributed to, then you may have noticed the theme, wander as we wander. That's what we are called to do this season as we journey to the cross. Today, Christ invites us to wander and wonder through a wilderness experience. And so here we go. Have you ever given much thought about the word tame? I've heard it used mostly with um, referring to an animal that has been domesticated, but also with my curly-haired friends who seek to bring their curls under control. The dictionary defines the word tame as to subdue, cultivate, bring under control, inhibit, rein in, tone down, or to deprive of spirit. As cringy as this may sound to me, if we say an individual is tamed, we can deduce they have been trained in some capacity to obey other people. On the other hand, if we say a person is wild, there's usually some negative connotation or judgment that goes along with that too. The dictionary defines wild as uncultivated, uninhabited, a desolate region or tract, wilderness or desert. Immediately after his baptism, Jesus is driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit and spends 40 days in the wild, tempted. He was with the wild beast. The Greek word is therion, 
meaning, of course, wild beast, but also untamed, savage, one given free reign as the angels waited on him. This wilderness experience of Jesus's seems to be in some ways a kind of coming of age rite of passage before entering into his ministry. One that would challenge his mission, his ministry, his very own identity. Now let's take a little closer look. The text does not say that Jesus tamed wild animals, nor does it say he fought them, overcame them, rose above them, or was attacked by them. It simply says he was with them. He lived with them, among them, all the while being nourished by angels. A sign of God's providence. Jesus lived among the animals of the wild, in the wilds of the desert. He learned the ways of the wild. He learned about nature and the difference between predator and prey. He learned to understand their community and order. He learned how to survive. It seems before entering his ministry that would challenge his goals and tempt his soul, Jesus first had to get in touch with his true nature not the cultivated one of societal and community expectations, values, and rules found in the constructed world, but his nature as God's child, an original human being, born of a natural community, wild and untamed, just as God is untamed at one with all of creation, tried and tested, raw and authentic. Like John before him, Jesus must be one with the wilds before entering into the dangerous territory of cultivated civilization. Some of you may remember the story of the Jungle Book, It was eventually made into a movie and became famous thanks to Disney. The story is about a young boy named Mowgli who is raised in the wilderness, a place where he understands the laws of nature, a place where loyalty is valued. In the story, man is the enemy of the natural world and cannot be trusted. The jungle is the peaceable kingdom, and the cultivated world is an unpredictable and fickle wild place where brother betrays brother, and no one is safe. In the wilderness, you can count on your pack to defend you. You know who your enemies are, whom you can trust, and whom you cannot, and why. And you know your place, predator or prey. Jesus needs this reminder of who he is. God's child, lamb of God. Before entering into the world of Pharisees, priests, officials, and others who would test his strength, betray his trust, question his identity, and undermine his authority. For this mission, he and his disciples would need to be, as Matthew's gospel says, wise as a serpent, yet gentle as a dove. In his wilderness experience, Jesus takes on the identity of Messiah, shepherd, anointed one. In the footsteps of his ancestor, David, who underwent wilderness experiences too. 
hiding from Saul and later dealing with the betrayal of his close friend and advisor, after which he wept alone on the Mount of Olives. David had been raised a shepherd, the youngest of sons and the least of his family. Used to living in the wilderness where he moved about with his sheep among predators and dangers. He learned how to deal with both opposition and temptation. While he developed the heart of a shepherd and the soul of a lion. Brave Strong in faith, steadfast in mission, unyielding in his trust in God's provision. So much so that when he faces Goliath with five smooth stones and a shepherd's sling, he sees not a giant, but a fool who has nothing against the power and might of the God of Israel. Both David and Jesus grew their faith in the wilderness, chosen by God and fit to survive. The wilderness of Israel was filled with wildlife. Lions, bears, panthers, leopards, jackals, cobras, hyenas, vipers, scorpions, porcupines, rats, Wolves and wild dogs roamed the deserts and lived in the same regions as deer, dove, gazelles, and goats. This was a place that longed for restoration. A wild place. A desolate place. It was also the place where God touched down to recreate the world and launch a plan for kingdom living. Only three primary places do we find the Greek word therion, again meaning wild beast. Three primary places in scripture that we find it are here in Mark, in the book of Acts, and throughout the book of Revelation all describing a desert-like, desolate environment in which a man-made, cultivated world is destroyed and God's recreation begins. God's restoration always emerges from the depths of barrenness. What is built up in opposition to God's will must be first destroyed before God can restore the beauty of a garden world. But God does not emerge from a cultivated place. But the God of Behemoth and Leviathan emerges from a wild and untamed place. We are a people who like living in a tame world. We love to control an environment we like to construct and a civilization we like to impose our will upon, often to the advantage of some and the detriment of others. But God comes from a wild place, a place where every creature, including humankind, lives together in harmony and a natural order, a place where God reigns supreme and God's will is done, a place where trust in God is paramount and we know who we are, a place where restoration begins with the mere basics of our faith. Jesus' experience in the wilderness tempted him to live as the world lives. But Jesus denied the ways of the world, instead opting to trust in God's provision, God's leadership, God's strength, and God's plan. When Jesus emerged from his wilderness experience, his message to all was this. 
The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. At this pivotal moment in Jesus' ministry, the kingdom of God touched down in a wilderness place, colliding with human nature. God's creative spirit made real in the world. And God's plan spread like a weed throughout the cultivated world, creating holy chaos and reminding people who they were, reminding them of what it means to be created in God's own image. Beloved, each of us were created to be wild, obedient to God and denying the ways of the world, the constructs of injustice, the hierarchies of the heart, the illusions of power and control that dominate the human-created community. And the church you are part of, the church is meant to be a wild place too, where God comes close to us and we move closer to God And a time for us to remember who we are. Beloved children of God and members of the created and natural community. Jesus will come out of his desert experience to be a wild card in the ordered life of everything everyone expected and knew. His disciples would be too. Don't let the world tame your God-given natural spirit. Don't let the world destroy the human part of you. How wild are you? Is it time to get in touch with your wild side? Amen. Friends, if we say we have no sin, 
We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. In humility, let us lift up our failures to God, who waits always to forgive. We admit we are hesitant to walk to Jerusalem and beyond with you, God of glory. In a world where we worry about tomorrow before enjoying today, we race by your moments of silence. In that flood of worries, which can overwhelm us, we may miss the assurance that you have not cut us off from your grace. In the desert of our desires, we may ignore that feast of hope, joy, and life that you offer to us. Forgive us and have mercy on us. In humility, may we offer our lives to others. In love, may we share your grace with everyone we meet. And in hope, may we wait for you all of our days. As you come to us in Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. We pray the blessings, we pray the peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. Friends, let us pray. God of new life, out of the abundance of our lives, we offer these gifts to you. Through your blessing and our willingness to share, may these offerings become a source, of, a source for hope and love in this church family and in the community beyond us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Friends, as we continue in our time of prayer, 
Let us continue to lift up in our prayers all of those who have been impacted and continue to be impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. Let us continue to keep in our prayers all those who seek healing and wholeness in the midst of illness. Let us continue to lift in our prayers all those frontline workers, those teachers, those researchers, those medical professionals, all those support staff who are making this global effort to find a treatment and vaccination for us possible. Friends, let us continue to lift up our global and local mission partners. Let us lift up our friends at Kenya Real and Kids Alive and so many other amazing missions around the the country and the world just doing God's work. We lift up prayers for the hungry and the lonely and the hurting. We lift up prayers for peace and compassion, prayers for empathy, clarity, and healing for the nation and the world. We lift up prayers for grieving families. And friends, let us especially lift up prayers today for those in Texas who continue to recover after recent snowstorms. Let us continue to lift up God's people around this world, wherever and however they might find themselves. And friends, know that your prayers shared through emails, through Facebook messages, prayers shared and prayers that remain on our hearts, are lifted to God. So now let us pray. Lord God, remember us even though we are only a few. Protect us from all evil, from all inner harm, which threatens us every day. Let your hand be over us so that at last a great power may stream out from your church into all the world, bringing the fulfillment of your promises. We thank you for all your goodness. Loving God, watch over us, we pray. Keep us in the right spirit and purpose and help us resist all that is wrong and harmful. Grant that we would serve you and not the world. God, protect us this day and every day. And now let us be bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
As Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness, so we will be spend 40 days in the season of Lent. Consider the faithfulness of God. Live each day proclaiming the good news in word and deed, that God is with us and the kingdom is near, even and especially in those wild places. Friends, may the God of covenant faithfulness enfold you. The beloved Son encourage you. And the Holy Spirit descend upon you in blessing this day and forever. Amen.